Hi guys and welcome to another Divi WordPress theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. What we're going to do today, we built this little uh, e-commerce store here. We built this with a fantastic Divi theme. We did it in about an hour. Today we're going to add a secondary menu, this top menu right here, and have a centered nav bar up there. Navigate to the various categories that we've got in our store here. Obviously I'm using the Divi theme. If you want to take it for a test drive, you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. Okay, let's get started. I'm just going to close that tab. And this is our existing site as is. Here's the menu that we've got. First thing I want to do is create a new menu of just the calories to go up the top. I've actually got them as a drop down here. I'm not going to mess with that at the moment. If I was doing this for real on a real store, I would delete this one and then put them up here. So let's go down to a dashboard. Once on the dashboard, you want to go to appearance and then menus, which is where I am at the moment. Create a new menu. I'm going to call it secondary. Purely, you can call it what you want, but we're going to be using what they call the secondary nav bar on this theme for this. So I'll call my menu secondary. Hit the create menu button. Now I don't want pages on this. What I actually want is my product categories. And if you happen to look down here and you've only got that categories on its own and not product categories, but you have got products and categories installed with WooCommerce, go up to the top to screen options up here. Just make sure you've got that little box checked that says product categories because by default it is unchecked. A lot of people spend a lot of time figuring that one out. I know I did when I first uh, had this issue. So that'll make sure once you've got that checked, that'll make sure you've got this tab here. I'm simply going to open that tab, put a check beside the ones that I want to add, which is pretty much all of them. Hit the add to menu button to add them to the menu. And that's it. You can left click and drag them, put them where you want to if they're not in the order that you like them. I'm going to leave mine just like that. And I'm going, going to go up to the save menu button up here and just click save menu. All right, so that's our first part done. We've actually got a menu to put in place now. Now we want to go to the theme customizer and that lives in appearance and then customize. I've already got mine open. And now I'm going to just do a refresh just so because we created that menu before this page was open. So if we refresh it, it should pick up that new menu. OK, now it's back loaded again. Let's go down to menus at the bottom here. There it is. There's our main one, which is this one here. And here's our secondary one that we just created. So I'm going to click on the left click on the little arrow there and assign it. And I'm going to assign it to the secondary menu, primary menu, which is this one. The current main menu is the primary menu. So I'm going to just click that to assign it to the secondary menu. And you should see it appear at the top. Fantastic. There it is. Just what we wanted. Uh, I've got a pink color behind there. Obviously, you can customize it pretty much how you want. Let's go back to our main settings here on the customizer. And we'll go to header and navigation and to secondary menu bar. Now, I've already got mine set to this pink color. Obviously, you might want to put yours elsewhere. But this is where you'd actually do that. And you can adjust the text size, letter spacing, text color, and drop down menu color etc. What you don't have here which I kind of would have liked to see which we do have with our primary menu is the ability to centralize this or float it left if we want it on the left etc. The other thing that you can do with this menu is if we go back and go down to header elements you can add social icons if you want to. You can add a phone number. As you see, it appears up there. And an email address if you wish. And as you can see, it adds that up there as well, which is great. 
I don't particularly want that for my site because I'm going to centralize that menu. So I'm going to publish the changes that we've got going on here. Now, to manipulate this menu a bit more like we've done with this one, we're going to have to use a bit of custom CSS. And don't let that put you off. I'll put it down below. If you want to use it, you're more than welcome to. So say you want the menu on the left hand side instead of to the right hand side. Let's I'm using Google Chrome here. So I've right clicked on it. I'm going to set, select inspect. And as you can see, that's taken to me to my actual list item, which is that particular link that I right clicked on to inspect. I need to go up a bit to get the actual menu itself. Let's have a look here. That's the menu. Yeah. And if we look here, as long as you've got elements selected on this side and styles on this side, you'll have HTML over here and CSS over here. It says float right. So this by default is being floated to the right. That's why it's on the right. If I change that to none or left would do it as well, I suppose. You can see it's automatically jumped over to the left hand side. So if you wanted to do that, you do it with that bit of custom CSS. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more CSS because I don't want my mom on the left or the right. I want it bang slap in the middle. And to make it do that, I'm going to use what they call a bit of flex CSS. So I'm going to say display flex. And then under that, I'm going to drop down another line. I'm going to say justify content. Justify dash content colon I want it to be in the center there we go and our menus slap bang in the center now which is just exactly what I wanted now I need to copy this from the closing curly bracket all the way up to the first hashtag before ET secondary menu so I'm gonna copy all of that control C because as we've written it in this browser here it's not permanent. So if I refresh this page, that's going to go back to being over here. So I'll demonstrate by doing it. There we go. As you can see, it's gone back to being over here. So let's make our changes permanent. So we'll, we'll, while we're in our customizer here, we want to go down to the additional CSS box at the bottom. I've already got a bit in here for other things that we've done. So I'm going to drop down, add a new one. I'm going to put a title in, makes things easier to find when you've got lots of code in there. And for a title, I want forward slash star star. And inside there, I'm going to write my title. So I'll say top menu or secondary menu, whatever you want to call it. And just below there, I'm going to paste that CSS that I copied from my Chrome browser just now. There it is right there. Now let's hit the publish button at the top to make that permanent. Now when I refresh, let's see what happens. Well, there we go. And our menu's back in the middle where we wanted it. So let's look at our original page here and do a refresh and have a look at it now. There we go. Let's make sure one of these is going to work. Let's click on one of the categories there. Fantastic. Great. So that's how easy it is to add a secondary menu to your Divi WordPress store. Really easy to do. Like I say, you can manipulate it with a bit of custom CSS if it's not doing exactly what you want it to do. So I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, share, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free web development courses down there as well as some premium web development courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.